Is that it? <sighs> Hi and welcome once again to X Chronicle. When we continue to look at the progress I'm making on my R squared S audio library. So this is the board. Uh, ignore this extra one that we've got at the end here. This is just another I squared S board that I'm just using for making to make sure that the library works with this board as well. So it's just extra, you wouldn't normally have this on. This uses an earphone socket that plugs in there. So let's just have a look at the additions I've done over the last couple of weeks. So here, are, very simple, a few lines of code. As before, in the last video we're making an object which is of type I squared S class. Called I squared S audio, passing it in the actual pins that we're going to use for R squared S, which are defined just up there. So the simple function we've implemented is a beat. This wasn't actually in the original deck audio, but it's in now. You can see there's no parameters here at the moment. And by default, with no parameters, it'll play a beep for a tenth of a second at 700 hertz pitch frequency. And it'll be a sine wave. In fact, I'll upload that now and I'll just show you a quick how it sounds demo. So just press the reset button, get to reboot and play the beep. And that's it. Okay, so that's how it sounds. So you could put some parameters in. I've actually copied the parameters off the Spectrum's beep command. So the first parameter in that is the duration. So for example, if I type in 100, that'll give exactly the same duration that, that beep does by default anyway. But let's set it for 500. This is in milliseconds. So although the Spectrum's duration was the first parameter, it was it in milliseconds or was it? I don't know, I can't remember. Uh, I think I have the Spectrum page open here to duration. What was duration given in? In seconds. So that would have been like 0.5 for half a second. We're doing that a little bit differently. So 500, it's in milliseconds, so a thousand milliseconds would be one second. So 500 is half a second. So we could leave it like that. I could leave it and just put 500 in and that will pay, play a half second sine wave at 700 hertz. Or we could reduce that to something a little bit lower. Let's say 300 hertz, so just less than half. And you could stop there and that's just like a spectrum, sort of, with the duration and frequency of the beep. For those that don't know what a Spectrum is, it's an old British computer from the early 1980s. It was extremely popular, popular in the UK, immensely so. I've added some extra parameters you can put in if you want. These are all optional, so as I said, you could do it with no parameters at all. You could have two parameters. The third parameter, should, the third parameter, should you choose to use it, is the volume, which is between zero and one and any decimal amount between that, so 0.5 would be 50% half volume. I'm going to change that so it is a percentage in the future, but for now I want to set, say, half volume, I put 0.5, but I'm going to have it at full volume, so I'm going to put 1, or at least I'm going to try. The next one is wave type, so it defaults to a sine wave. We could, and you've heard that, we could set it to, uh, and these are presets, defines that you can use, so we, we could have sawtooth, so we've got a sine, wave sine, wave sawtooth, wave triangle, and wave square are the four options you can have for the, the acoustic properties of the beep. There is then just one last parameter, which is if you choose to have it in, it defaults to true if you don't, it's a boolean. So true, so if you set, it, if you set this last parameter to true, it will mix the beep with any sounds that are currently playing on your system. That you've, you know, whether that's a, a WAV file playing or whatever it might be. By default, it will mix. So if I put false in there, then any other sounds, it didn't need to be lowercase, false, false, we were recording in C. When that plays now, it would cancel any other sound that's currently playing. You might have two or three sounds, it would all be cancelled, everyone would stop, and that would just play and then finish. If we leave that empty or set it to true, then it will mix it in with anything else that's currently outputting, which is a sensible default. So, I'll leave it on sine wave because it's a little more present than sawtooth. And um, we'll reload that and you can listen to the five times longer beep and the lower tone. So let's upload that to the board. Quick press the reset button. And that's only because, as I said before, 
I've already uploaded this and it's played once and it only ever plays once. Else it kept repeating. It gets really annoying for me when I'm developing. So if I press it again, we get it to play again. So you can see that's longer, half a second exactly, and a much lower tone than before. Etc. 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 Let's move on to something different. Okay, on to the next example. And although I'm only going to show two examples today, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes to get these two up and running on top of the WAV player I demonstrated last time. So although it doesn't look like much, it's been a reasonable task to get this transport over to the new R2S system. At times I was scratching my head and other body parts too. But we got there. Again, this was all available in the original software, in the DAC Audio software. And it was aim was to play simple melodies or whatever for simple games or whatever it might be you want a melody for. So you can see what the melody might be with Twinkle Twinkle for those that are familiar with that nursery rhyme. And this defines that musical score. I'll be going into this in much more detail when this library is finished. So yeah, we create the class again. There we go, doing that. And then we create a musical score class. And to that, and it's called music. And to that musical stuck score class, we pass the notes that we're going, we want to play. We can pass it the tempo, and otherwise the playback speed that we want to play. And all these are defined in an additional file. I'll show you that now. So these are the tempos in beats per minute. And these are, I designed these back with DAC Audio. They are... They're as close to the actual tempos used in music as I could get it and from the information I had on the internet to work with. So it defaults to Allegro, and I'm using Allegro, but we could play, play it faster, that's the fastest one we've got, or really slow with, I don't even know how to pronounce these, um, but there you go, you can pronounce them yourself in your own head. But it's set for Allegro. I will show you how tempo prestissimo uh, sounds in a second. But for now, let's just upload this and let you listen to it. Oh, and yes, it's set to play with the instrument piano. Um, that bit has not been completed. In fact, it was not completed in the old software. It was a very rough piano. It's basically, I think it's a, it's a sine wave or was it triangle wave? I can't remember what I used for instrument piano, but it was something that simple. There was envelopes to it. So envelopes, we'll go into detail with maybe in another video but envelopes allow you to manipulate a sound wave to get it to sound more like an actual instrument so although it's got instrument piano and that is the default as well because you don't have to have these we could reduce this back down to just this and that would default to allegro and the piano instrument anyway and i'll upload it like that i'll set that going it won't sound like a piano and that will be something that's worked on absolutely Either, that'll be worked on after the initial release. I never finished that in the original deck audio. It didn't sound quite like a piano. And I don't think many people use it at all. So it was not a priority. And it's not a priority now to get those sounds correct to the music instruments. I've got ones in there that says saxophone, piano, uh, guitar, maybe. Can't quite remember. Uh, they're not going to be implemented for some time. The important thing for people, I think, is being able to play WAV files and MP3 files from memory or from SD. That's where the priority lies, apart from I have implemented this ability to play a musical score. So let's have a look, listen to that. Okay, off we go. Okay, I think we can all agree that's, uh, yeah, an interesting rendition of Twinkle Twinkle. Let's have a look at what happens if we actually, you know, increase the tempo. Okay, so I have copied the faster tempo, because I can't remember how to spell things, into there. So tempo, press E, T, press E, yeah, that one. So let's see how that sounds. And upload. So let's have a listen to that with the faster tempo. Oh, 
Well, you get the idea. It was designed, and this isn't new code, I've just transferred it from the old Decordio library. It was designed to make it easy and very musical to create any sort of melodies or whatever it is on the system so that you're using same musical terms and you didn't have to set the overall speed of the music as such in between each note. You set the beats between each note, which is what you do, so it's how many beats between each note, how many beats a note lasts for, and then it's up to you setting the actual overall tempo as to how fast that plays. At least that was the general idea. Anyway, that's it for this episode. And I have now got probably 80% easily of the original chord base transferred over to the I squared S new library, the new I squared S library. So what's left is almost a mopping up. So hopefully in, they how busy work is, but hopefully in a couple of weeks or so, we'll be able to get that sort of 100% transferred over and then I need to start improving it and adding extra features that are desperately needed, such as ability to play from an SD card, multiple sounds at once from an SD card. Not just playing one file, which is what you'll find from all the libraries that I've ever come across for Arduino, ESP32, whatever, they'll play just that one sort of WAV file or MP3 from an SD card. We need to be able to play multiple so we can mix and sounds, mix sounds together. So that's critical, we need that doing. We also need the fill buffer taken out of the main loop and just disappearing altogether. So everything runs neatly in the background without you having to think about things like that. Those are the two crucial things I want to definitely work on once I've got the entire code base transferred across, which I've just said will be very, very soon, hopefully. Not much more to go now on that. So, thanks very much for watching this video. And, you know, shove a like on if you feel like shoving something somewhere. If you want to subscribe, that'd be cracking too. Thanks for patrons who stick behind me through thick and thin. And for those that patronise me in the comments who also seem to stick by me thick and thin and keep on patronising. Anyway, so all for now. Thanks, as always, very much for watching.